Hey everybody, uh, in this video I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of the CSS property will change and I just want to show you the impact it can have on reducing paints in your application. Now if you're not aware, a paint is part of the browser rendering process. Uh, so basically it's just part of the task that a browser needs to do to paint something to the screen or to show something on the screen. And the paint step is basically where pixels are being drawn on the screen. Now this isn't the most expensive part of the browser rendering process necessarily, uh, but cutting down on paints can lead to pretty significant uh, performance increases in some cases. And it's going to help you get to that 60 frames a second that's going to make your application feel nice and smooth to use rather than a bit janky and uh, stuttery. So the will change property can help us reduce paints uh, as well as other optimizations the browser can perform because of that. Uh, we can reduce paints, so that means the browser has less work to do, so we'll be able to uh, render frames faster, which means our application is going to be more performant. So we're going to just take a look at a, just a sort of demonstration of that today with two examples that I have from uh, my uh, advanced animations and interactions with Ionic book, and I'll link to that in the description if you want to check that out. Uh, but I have one of the example uh, applications up here and we'll take a look at one of the projects in the book as well. Uh, but I just want to show you how I'm using the will change property to reduce paints and also some things you need to keep in mind uh, when using the will change property. So in taking a look at how many paints our application is triggering, it's helpful to have this rendering tab open here or the draw. Uh, if you don't have this open, uh, you can find it quite easily either through uh, clicking the three dots and then choosing rendering, or you can just hit uh, command shift P. And if you just type in rendering, you'll see it comes up with this draw show rendering option. So you can just select that and then enable the paint flashing option. And so what this is going to do is uh, flash a green box on the screen every time a paint occurs. So what we're going to do is uh, this application here has will change transform set up on this sliding draw component. And so basically that's just us saying to the browser, we are planning on changing this property. So please make whatever performance optimizations you think are necessary for that. Now, sometimes this will have no impact. Sometimes it will have a bad impact, uh, but let's have a look at what happens in this case. So if I just get rid of the will change property and now let's try using this sliding draw. So if I just click it to open and close it, you can see we get a paint initially when I click it and then it slides down and we get another paint at the end, which you know, this is two paints, which isn't particularly bad, uh, you know, it's not going to destroy the performance of our application, but if we can reduce paints, uh, it's always going to be beneficial to do so, assuming that we're not hurting our application in other ways. And if I drag this, uh, we get the same behavior as well. So when I start the drag, uh, I get a, a paint flash indicating that a paint has occurred. And when I release it, we get another flash occur either at the top or the bottom. But if I enable this will change property and we do this again, now, if I click it, there is no paints being triggered, uh, no matter if I'm opening or closing it or dragging it to open and close it. Uh, in both cases, there is no paints occurring at all. So in this case, it's going to improve the performance of this component because we're not having the browser have to perform those paints. And the reason that this works is that since we're saying to the browser, we're going to change this transform property on this element here, and we're changing the translate to move this up and down using transform translate Y. Uh, the browser can see that, well, this, this is going to get a performance benefit if I put this element onto its own layer and composite that layer in during the browser rendering process. So rather than being sort of lumped in with everything else, this part of the application is now on its very own layer that the browser is rendering. A very important thing to keep in mind with the will change property is that you shouldn't just lump it into things. You shouldn't just pop it onto things and sort of expect to get a performance benefit from it. Uh, in general, uh, you shouldn't really preemptively use this property at all. I might be building this component and think, oh yeah, I'm going to change the transform. I'm animating that. So, you know, let's throw in a will change transform there because uh, that makes sense. 
and in a lot of cases it might, uh, but this property is a sort of dangerous one to use. Basically, we want to avoid telling the browser to optimize things that we don't need optimized or to use it in ways that aren't really helping. So the sort of safest way to use it is to measure the performance of your application, which I'm not going to do in this video, but I've got some stuff on this, I think in other videos I could link to. Uh, you wanna sort of take a performance profile of an interaction or whatever you're doing. And then after that, if you think well, this could have some uh, performance improvements, maybe you've enabled this paint flashing and you can see flashing on the screen and you're like, well, maybe I can get rid of those paint flashes if I use the will change property. Measure everything beforehand, add in the will change property, and then see if you're actually getting a performance benefit from that. And the other important thing to keep in mind is that you should only use this when you need it. So uh, in this case, I've just added this directly to the CSS of the element, which is generally something, depending on the situation, I would say you wouldn't usually do that, uh, but there are certainly circumstances where you can. And the reason that I've added this directly to the CSS is that I expect this sliding draw component to be interacted with a lot. Uh, that might depend on how you're using this component. Perhaps it's just, you know, a secondary sort of feature. But since I expect it to be used a lot, I want that to be optimized all the time. And it's just this one element I'm optimizing, so it's not really a big deal to just permanently have that uh, will change property there to get those performance optimizations. But you don't want to just go putting this on everything. And as I said, if this wasn't being interacted with all the time, I probably wouldn't add this to the CSS. So to demonstrate what I sort of mean by that, I have another example here. Uh, from one of the projects in the book. And in this case, we aren't adding the will change properly directly to the CSS. We're setting it dynamically as we need it. So let's have a look at the behavior of this uh, application here. So I've got the paint flashing option enabled and let's just drag one of these items as an example. So you can see when I start that drag, the, uh, we have a paint flash. But then as I slide it, there's no more paint flashes until I hit the point where it changes into the archive action. And at that point we get that another paint flash. And again, I can keep sliding and there's no more paint flashes until I hit the delete action. And now there is another paint flash. But the key point is there's no paint flashes just when it's sliding in general, it's just when that item is changing. But what I'm doing differently with this uh, component here, each one of these is its own individual uh, component. And what I don't want to do is add will change to every single one of these. So I do get performance benefits from using will change. It's removing those paint flashes for me. But if I do that for every single email that's gonna be in this list, that's not probably going to be great for performance because I'm saying to the browser, I want to optimize all of these things. Please dedicate some resources to optimizing the interactions with these components by creating new layers or, or doing whatever. But for most of these, uh, this is a sort of email application, most of these I'll probably never slide at all. I may come here and never interact with this, or maybe I'll come and just say, well, this email is you know, garbage, I'm going to delete that one. So if I'm optimizing every single item here, and I'm only ever going to interact with one, that's not really a good way to spend the browser's resources. So instead, what uh, we'll do in this case is set the will change property dynamically when this gesture starts and when the gesture ends, we will uh, remove that. So just to take a quick look at what that looks like, you can see in the on will start for this gesture here, uh, I'm setting the style, uh, the style dot will change to transform. And this is the stencil JS version of the book. Uh, there is an angular version as well and uh, there will be a react one um, uh, soon. Uh, so this is just the sort of stencil style syntax, but you know you might have uh, the Angular renderer in here, for example, setting the will change uh, property to transform. So on will start is triggered uh, when the gesture is about to start. So at that point, basically I'm saying to the browser, hey, I'm about to, about to start dragging this thing. Uh, it would be great if we could get some performance optimizations there. So the browser will do that. It'll you know set it up on its own layer or whatever it needs to do. Then we perform our gesture, we do everything related to that. And then when the gesture ends, 
we get rid of that optimization by setting it to unset here. So just to have a quick look at what it would look like without the optimization, I'm just going to comment out both of these. So now if we uh, drag one of these, you can see that as I drag it, we're getting a paint flash like every single time that this item changes here. So even before it was just when we we're crossing over this threshold uh, between the different actions, but now we get it on every single frame essentially here, uh, we are getting those paint flashes. So this is definitely the kind of thing we want to remove, but we don't, as I said, want to optimize every single one of these items. So instead we set it dynamically when the gesture is about to begin, and then we can get those uh, performance benefits of not having paint flashes every time the um, item moves, but we also aren't dedicating a massive amount of browser resources trying to optimize things that may never even be interacted with. So setting it dynamically can be a bit tricky in circumstances. It works well with gestures because we have this on wheel start uh, handle that we can make use of to set that. Uh, but depending on the situation, you might need to come up with a way to set that wheel change property before whatever animation or interaction that you're performing uh, starts because the browser does need sort of a fraction of a second to actually apply the performance optimization. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Uh, if you did, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, if you do want to check out the book, I'll have a link to that in the description. Uh, but otherwise, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.